In season one of Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, OCD extraordinaire Chiri remarks that she only enjoys traditional four coma manga. This four stage manga format is very rigid and traditional. There will be a panel depicting an introduction, development, turning point, and a conclusion. A fascinated Zetsubo sensei claims that this is absurd, and there's clearly a fifth panel essential to every story despair. No matter how inspiring, joyous, or motivating a story is, it will reach the same destination as every other if taken far enough. What is that, you might ask? Well... Fura Kafka probably had a tough upbringing considering her father was schizophrenic and her mother was possessed by a demon, but she took it like a champ and blossomed into one of the most gracious and almost nauseatingly optimistic characters I've ever seen. And yet another would-be traumatic encounter. As she's walking to school one day, she stumbles upon a stranger, neck at the end of a rope, swaying limply from the branch of a sakura tree. As hype boosters weren't yet popularized in Japan, it was evident to Kafka that this was just an alternative method of hype maxing gone terribly wrong. She leapt into action and saved the man, which was met by his... annoyance. The man, Itoshiki, is deeply riddled with despair and has zero aspirations beyond a burning desire to self-delete. He's radically pessimistic, self-loathing, and rash, but has many people who care for him, a secure financial situation, and a great fear of loss. Personally, I find a lot of his qualities to be very relatable, but that's enough exposition for now. The grisly setup is probably jarring to a lot of people, so what does this morbid and philosophical premise have to do with making anything legitimately funny or entertaining? Well, pretty much everything. For one thing, I generally think the best comedy is tied to other intense emotions. The serious subject matter gives the show an unsettling edge which seems to somehow make it funnier when all the dumb shit goes down. Beyond that though, the series' identity as a dark comedy is tremendously important. While it's very episodic and comedic in nature, there is a consistent implication that something more sinister is underlying these characters, that is typically played off as a gag. Sudden shifts into horror imagery are relatively common throughout the series, and they instill the viewer with unease. There is an absurdity to it, a sense that it's willing to go anywhere, and oftentimes this creates a natural tension which serves as a perfect build-up to a punchline. This absurdity is even reflected by Kafka's name, based on the surrealist author Franz Kafka, most famous for his short story about a dude waking up and just being a bug all of a sudden. In this story, the limits of human sympathy are pushed and ultimately surpassed, showing that there truly is no sacred line humanity is unwilling to cross. The precedent set by Zetsubo Sensei's dark premise and the series' ties to horror make for such a unique atmosphere. This is further amplified by what may be the most important facet of Zetsubo Sensei's comedy, the meta. Frequent inclusions of real-life images of the show's creators, as well as the inclusion of real message board posts all over the backgrounds make this show feel connected to the real world and by extension the viewer. This isn't even to mention the abundance of jokes the series makes that blatantly break the fourth wall and address the viewer directly. Once again, this series is first and foremost a comedy but even just a little bit goes a long way in terms of developing a mystique. Also, I should mention that this is a satirical series, oftentimes poking fun at major social customs of Japanese society. The fact that these critiques are coming from a man-baby who can't endure mild inconvenience without resorting to throwing his head through a rope helps a lot with making the criticism seem... not too... well... you know... <laughs> The entire main cast of characters are all just loonies with some severe psychological quirk which places them in a highly abnormal category of society. They're super zany and exaggerated, but the show never loses touch with its relatability. Three seasons and 290 chapters of hijinks ensue as Itoshiki, Kafka, Tail Poeing Girl, Yaoi Girl, Dual Personality Panty Shot Girl, Crazed Stalker Girl, OCD Terrorist Girl, Illegal Immigrant Who's Clearly Like Four Years Younger Than Everybody Else Girl, Silly Eyes Girl, Nami, and Shut In Who Hides in Wacky Places Girl, as well as many, many others laugh and chill and play around and shit. From satire to stupidity, this group of misfits really turns into a comforting bunch once you get far enough into the series. Every new character slash episode is familiar and feels like somewhere you've been before. 
I remember watching the first season of the anime in one night. The plots range from mundane to unhinged, but I just kept going on to the next episode. Partly because every episode opens with the coolest anime opening you will ever hear and closes with another banger, smushing the actual content of the episode into an awesome sandwich? Bruh. Everyone has their favorite character, and I see the merit in many of them, but if you can't tell by the PFP, I'm partial to Kafka. I think she's really funny, but seeing somebody so stupidly optimistic and uplifting just feels kinda uncanny. Like you can never shake the idea that she has something to hide. The show is told through Itoshki's perspective, as he and the viewer haven't yet come to terms with the fact that Kafka has been dead for months. In adherence to her altruistic spirit, her organs were all donored to girls on the brink of death, saving their lives. Her presence can be felt within all of these girls, and every time she's on screen, it's actually another character entirely. Itoshiki simply can't keep living without that sense of hope in his life. Hope cannot exist without despair, and despair cannot exist without hope. But as his hope has died, in the series' final act, he follows her into the afterlife. Maybe the most important facet of the show's relatability is its massive emotional range. Most instances of depression don't involve a total absence of laughter or happiness. It's just an unrelenting force that brings you back into that same vault at the end of every day. Many people with tendencies like this live full lives with the affliction, and Itoshiki is one such person. He does what he has to and manages to stay alive for a very long time. While the story ends in death, it brims with life for its entire runtime. 290 chapters of life to a measly 10 of death. Itoshiki's eventual decision to join the afterlife isn't even really the point. The fact that we had the opportunity to be invested warrants graciousness. It bears repeating that every story ends in death if taken far enough, without exception. In some ways, it's a story about saying goodbye and finally moving on. In the great Franz Kafka's metamorphosis, this meant moving on in life. But for Zetsubo Sensei, he needed to move on in death. And who knows, maybe the radical shift at the end does something to break what can seem like the monotony of 290 chapters and three seasons of episodic comedy. And that's the point I want to end this video on. So, for all of you guys who made it this far, for one thing, thank you so much, but um, other than that, if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe, it helps to an enormous degree. Other than that, um, just have a good day, guys. Hmm, I got, a, got another patron with a goon-centric username. Huh.